Oh god, can you people please go five seconds without asking about the progression system? Just please let us go through one stream. I see questions here from... Uh... Bonus Sasella on YouTube says Almir is happy with the progression system. Oh my god. Breaking news, heisters. We understand our game is a broken mess, which is why we're dedicated to fixing it for you. Hold up in our Swedish log cabins, it's our responsibility to delay the patch. You know, the patch that was supposed to be coming a few days ago? After repeatedly mentioning the October 5th release date, we're not seeing it until... in the middle of the month? Uh-oh, I'm starting to think this whole crossplay thing isn't worth it. To put this into perspective, let's look at where Payday 2 got within a month of its release, and... yeah. We were on update 11. This was one of the several major updates that came out within the first month of Payday 2's life. And in that same time, we're getting bug fixes? But look, transparency is our biggest concern, which is why we're sharing our roadmap for our next year of DLC with seasonal features and quality of life. Look, guys, your game is broken. It's great you actually want a consistent way to deliver DLC, but your game simply isn't done yet. It launched too early. Whether that's the fault of Deep Silver or Starbreeze, I don't know. But unless you get your shit together and fix all the outstanding issues, not many people are gonna give the game a second chance. Somebody, somewhere in the chain of command, fucked up. And the result is a failed launch that will forever limit this game's potential. We could have seen an extra year of development, and guess what? They could have ironed out all those bugs. They could have added more content, but... Well... Look. You know how I said I don't know who to blame? That was bullshit. Because Starbreeze did fuck up. They fucked up by allowing Deep Silver to be their publisher. But to understand, we need to talk about another one of Deep Silver's failures. In December of 2012, after years of financial issues and a failed attempt to raise money, the publisher THQ filed for bankruptcy and was forced to auction off all of its assets in January of 2013. Among these was Game Studio Volition, creators of the Red Faction and Saints Row series, alongside others. Volition was acquired by Deep Silver, a publisher that was really only known at the time for Dead Island, a middling game with misleading marketing that made it out to be something that it wasn't. For their first game under Deep Silver, Volition seemingly didn't have to change much. Saints Row 4 was already in development for quite a long time before their publisher got changed. But a trend with Deep Silver here is, the longer you stay with them, the more you lose your identity. And this was something that became apparent a few games later, with Agents of Mayhem. To put it simply, Deep Silver completely fumbled Volition's attempts to make a good game. They ruined the marketing by making people think it was a Saints Row game, all the while they were holding up development so Volition was unable to do anything. With all of these factors in mind, AOM became a complete flop. Volition was to blame here too, over-promising to their publisher with features that weren't in the game, but in the end, it was Deep Silver that said, we need to get this game out now. This behavior would get replicated again with the Saints Row reboot. Volition wanted the reboot to be a callback to the original Saints Row series, taking cues mostly from the second and third games. But Deep Silver once again stepped in and demanded change, and with it came that atrocious story. The complete disrespect of the franchise and everything it stood for. Deep Silver killed Volition, but we need to get back to Starbies and Payday as a series. It's hard to say here what was mandated by Deep Silver or not, since I don't have contacts inside Starbreeze, but we can make educated guesses, and starting with the most disastrous of them all is the servers. If you played this game on release, then you know you couldn't play it on release. For a good few days, getting into a game was impossible, the servers were simply dead. Now it'd be very easy to point fingers at Starbreeze in this situation, since, well, they run the servers, right? We're gonna answer that question by looking at a press release from Starbreeze. This might sound boring, but believe me, it's, it's pretty good. Payday 3 matchmaking infrastructure has not performed as tested and expected. Matchmaking software encountered an unforeseen error, which made it unable to handle the massive influx of players. The issue caused an unrecoverable situation for Starbreeze's third-party matchmaking partner. Wow, okay, so... This last line here is 
corporate speak, basically telling you to go fuck yourself as nicely as possible. It also reveals that, yes, Starbreeze wasn't working alone, but who was their partner here? Well, this is where Deep Silver enters the picture again, because they like sharing resources between their companies, and just like with Volition, they hired Excelbyte to do server work for Payday 3. You can even still find the article Excelbyte made for Starbreeze Nebula. And just like with Volition, Starbreeze had problems with them, to put it mildly. So even independent of anything else, we can know for sure that Deep Silver is responsible for the server outages in the game's first week. This was a crucial time to secure new players that likely won't ever come back, even if things are turned around. But even then, could Deep Silver have been responsible for online only entirely? Was this destined to happen no matter what? Your boy Almir doesn't seem to be that good at defending it. Mr. Dr. Pepper says, since the game is online only, what happens if the servers go down? Well, they won't, is my answer. <laughs> Hopefully. Ah, I'm up to here with these people! Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker! <laughs> Appears like the computer ain't working right. Staying on that topic of outsourcing though, it came out on the 5th that a majority of the character art was outsourced to a studio called Blue Papillions. Looking at their website, they've been responsible for nothing but mobile game trash before ever getting involved with Payday 3. And honestly, their work in this game isn't much better. If you've been wondering why the Civ models are so... yeah. Or why dozers don't look like dozers anymore, this is why. The fact that Starbreeze had to outsource their character models paints a really good picture on the state of the game's development. They either aren't prepared enough, or didn't have enough time to make these assets themselves. So they got left to a studio who doesn't understand the design language of Payday enemies. You have to start wondering, just how much of the game was outsourced? Seeing as they've moved to Unreal Engine, could they even be using store assets? Could we even confidently say this is a Starbreeze game? I have to state again, I think the biggest problem here was time. The skeleton of something great does exist, but at this point I'm worried if Starbreeze will be able to realize it in time. With the way the current patch is going, are we even going to see people playing by next month? It's hard to say. If they want to turn it around, they have to do it fast. Anyway, I think I've said most of what I wanted to. I would like to know more about Deep Silver's involvement with this series, and if I learn anything, I'll gladly tell all of you. But until then, we'll just have to hope that the people up top realize what to do before it's too late. It's been great having you. Bye.